Hey, how's it going everyone? So I want to give you a brief overview of the Predator 420 and the FL250. Um, you know, as you can see, everything is real rough right now. Everything's tack welded. Uh, still needs paint. Obviously the wheels will be painted the same color. I believe that'll be black. The chassis will be black. Everything else will be red. And uh, a lot of guys have been reaching out to me saying careful of the roll cage. I realize that the roll cage is completely bolted on. Um, so before paint, I'm going to actually weld the roll cage instead of having bolts and reinforce it in some known weak points. I appreciate everyone's help. Um, that is the standard JEGS poly seat um, that has been welded in place. Again, everything has been tack welded. If you look, the frame is starting to get fully boxed. Um, I figured that would be nice to stiffen it up. Uh, I myself is 170 pounds, but I believe, you know, the frame can handle a lot more than that. Um, just not totally sure. There's not too much information on these uh, go-karts. Currently, there is no brakes on this thing. I was going to use a mechanical brake, as you can see down there, but through some trial and error, the mechanical brake is not going to work. Um, so I ordered a Honda CBR 600 rear brake and master cylinder that I plan on mounting on the inside of the frame somewhere. Um, believe it or not, I got all that for $60 off eBay, including brand new brake pads. Shout out to Mike in Florida. I don't know your eBay name, but if I know it, I'll add a link. Um, so, like I said, this is the Predator 420. Initially, I was going to dyno it stock, but a pipe came in, and I said, eh, what the hell, nobody cares about stock numbers. So, I added the pipe, removed the filter to the carburetor. Yes, I know, then, you know, you can intake a lot of things in the carburetor. I'm not too concerned about it whatsoever. And uh, I did try rejetting it. Turns out that the uh, it came with a couple spare jets. Turns out my smallest drill bit was too much fuel anyway, so I put the factory jet back in it. Um, as you can see, there is the Comet 94C and 94D driven and drive unit. Uh, the belt, I believe, is an inch and three sixteenths. Um, the belt is also very small in terms of uh, length, overall length. I wanted to keep these pulleys very close together, and as you can tell. Uh, in the video, it looks like they're actually going to collide. They're actually not. I've been running it this way for a little bit. I did have them collide once. There's a nasty groove in the drive pulley, but uh, we'll get that taken care of. If you look, the engine and the torque converter are actually mounted rather low. Um, I've seen a bunch of individuals mount the Predator 420 about four or five inches higher than the top of the cross member right here. And um, I want to keep the center of gravity as low as possible. These things are known for tipping, and I'm actually considering widening the uh, stance on it. I removed the factory axle and gearbox and put a one-inch solid uh, shaft um, axle in here. Um, one of the big issues with the dyno is this axle is actually bent. I got it from Surplus Center. I got it for inexpensive. Most of my parts come from BMI Carts. They've been nothing but awesome to me. Um, they have all the wildest things that you can possibly think of for rather inexpensive. I've reached out to a couple individuals about making this dyno video um, about some help with performance parts. None of them want anything to do with it. That's completely fine. Um, you know, for people who are helping me out, I'm going to add links in the uh, description below. Um, what else can I say about this? So let me take you through a couple things. Um, yeah, for all the haters that say, you know, Predator 420 in, in an Odyssey, um, waste of time. Um, it's actually a lot of fun, and it's a project I'm doing solely based on a lot of people are um, building these Predator 420 engines and saying, my 30 horsepower Predator 420 or my 25 um, horsepower Predator 212. Yeah, bullshit. Um, so there's actually, I have really have not found many dyno numbers out there for these uh, carts, or for these engines, excuse me. So what I plan on doing is I plan on putting this on a chassis dyno, which is actually over here. So this is the Comet 94C and 94D drive and driven unit. Um, and, you know, I did dyno this. It came out to 15.5 horsepower. Now, I don't think that's a realistic number because you have a torque converter which is constantly adjusting for the load and the speed and the RPM that you're giving it. 
So what I plan on doing is to get you guys real numbers to the tire. Now these are 22 inch tires. They're 11 inches roughly wide. Um, they're not that heavy. Um, you know, the axle is one inch uh, keyed axle. So there is going to be drivetrain losses. What those percents are, I don't know. I don't care. I just want to prove and come out there with people are saying, you know, like I said, 35 horsepower Predator 420 motors. Okay, prove it. I'm here to prove it. Now, over here is the dyno. It is a chassis dyno. It is a dyno uh, mite dynamometer out of uh, New Hampshire. I actually believe they were just bought out by another company. But excuse the plates. They're missing right now. They're actually getting powder coated again. We pull cars in and out of here all the time, even during winter months. And uh, it's... Um, it gets rust, you know. Here I'm in the Northeast in upstate New York, we get a lot of rust. Here is a 630 cent horsepower Pontiac G8. Um, used to be my daily driver. So, what we're looking at to do is quite literally, I want to do a 12 tooth gear up here, a 35 tooth gear back there, remove the, you know, obviously remove the torque converter. This is a 13 tooth up here with a 65 tooth down there. Now, the reason why I want to do direct drive is so there's no messing around with the torque converter. I don't want the torque converter to be compensating for anything. I want the engine to be basically directly connected to the rear wheels. Now, how are you going to start that? Well, the electric start won't start it, and it certainly won't move a, uh, a five to 8,000 pound drum. So I'm actually borrowing a sprint car starter, which is actually going to start spinning the dyno for me, which will basically jump start the uh, motor. So right now, it has just a inch and a quarter pipe, and it has a uh, carburetor with no filter on it. Now, I get it. You know, don't run the engine with no filter. It's bad. You'll suck up things. You'll blow the motor. You're an idiot. I don't care. Um, so it made 15.5 horsepower, like I said, with the torque converter. Um, I want to get more realistic numbers. Uh, I have to wait until my axle comes in. Now, here's the biggest dilemma. I live in Boston and have a shop in uh, upstate New York. I was born, grew up here, moved to Boston to pick up a corporate job. I know, what a mistake, you're an idiot, yeah, I hear you. Um, so it's going to take some time for parts to come in and for me to get back here and get back to work. Um, so, you know, we're working on it. Um, this is temporary, of course. Um, everything, there's zip ties, you know, there's parts that are missing, I get it. But it works for now, and I'm very grateful for that. So the engine builds I plan on doing, I don't know if it's stage one, two, three, go power sports says all these stages and let's just not get into that crap. So right now, pipe, factory jet, uh, no filter, 15.5 horsepower, give or take. What I plan on doing, by the way, this motor has the governor removed and it spun to 45, 4600 RPM. And I think the valve started to float. I'm not sure, but I wasn't going to go any further past that. It has the factory connecting rod and it has the factory um, uh, flywheel. So, you know, just we want to be on the safe side. Also, it was 87 gas in here and it was probably, you know, a couple months old. So, you know, whatever. Up here, I think it's up to 20% or up to 10% ethanol in there. So, you know, there's probably water in there. Who the hell knows? Anyways, with that being said, what I want to do is I want to dyno it before and after, relatively stock, or I might bring it back to stock, and then do the pipe and then the car and do the you know, filter. Then I want to move on to you know, doing a flywheel, uh, connecting rod, and camshaft. Um, of course, have a supporting carburetor as well. I think we're going to go with Makuni 32 or 34, whatever is less money. Guys, I'm doing this on a budget. I'm trying to do this for you. Um, by the way, I have t-shirts for sale. It's basically the FL250, and there's an FL450 on them. Uh, check it out, link in below. And 2.5% uh, uh, of all proceeds go to uh, veterans. One of them is the Wounded Warriors Project, and my buddy's hooking me up with another one. Um, I believe in supporting vets. I'm not a vet, but I believe in supporting it, so go there. Anyways, moving on, uh, I also want to do a cylinder head program. So this is the Hemi style cylinder head, which, okay, cool. Um, here, let me show you what a Hemi style cylinder head is. Again, excuse the mess, we're doing clean out. So here is a Hemi style cylinder head for a Predator 420. And let's go get a normal non-Hemi for a 420. Can you see the differences? Bet you can. 
So what we're going to be doing is I, we're going to be shaving this. I'm not sure how much we can shave this with an aftermarket cam. Look how close those seats are. Um, I don't know how many thousands they are, but it's relatively close versus this where, you know, we still can shave it. We can weld it. We can do whatever we want to this cylinder head. My buddy's hooking me up with that. He's an engine builder up in Norwich, New York. Um, I'm going to add his link, and uh, he's been helping me out a lot. From there, we're going to port it. Now, how are you going to do a before and after porting before and after? Well, lucky for me, there is a uh, hemi cylinder head there. There's another one over there. There's a non-hemi cylinder head there. And there's another non-hemi cylinder head here. Got a bunch of them. Um, there's a place online where you can pick them up for about 20 bucks, which is amazing. Um, so we're going to be doing a cylinder head program to get the numbers that, you know, the 35 horsepower, whatever the hell people are working with. Um, quite frankly, that's it. Um, I do plan on running this uh, on 100 low lead gas. It's the aviation fuel. Um, and, you know, see if 93 helps as well. Um, around here, you can't really get race gas unless you travel a few hours. You can get it in the Boston area. I don't plan on traveling four and a half hours in back of my car to have, uh, you know, five-gallon pail of uh, fuel, especially with my girlfriend and my dog in back. I just wouldn't feel that's the most responsible thing. Um, what else did I cover? I, I think that's it. Like I said, I'm trying to do this for you guys. Uh, I'm just sick and tired of seeing numbers. You know, the 35 horsepower, I think there's a number out there saying like a 65 or 70 horsepower uh, Predator 670. And, uh, you know, I'm all about proving it. Um, my background is I, uh, drag racing was always a hobby. The closest dyno to me was like 200 and something miles, so I decided to get the dyno. And, uh, you know, it's just been a, a great learning experience. Um, contact me if you're in the upstate area. Um, I'd be happy to uh, let you guys use my dyno. Um, it really doesn't see much work, so you know that would be kind of nice. Also, if anybody wants the factory wheels and tires with hubs from an FL250, let me know. Um, I'm, all I'm asking is you do one of two things: you pick it up, or you figure it out a way to get it to your place um, free. You know, you're going to pay for the shipping and everything else. But actually, let's go take a look at the tires. Um, there's a bit of little, there's a little bit of uh, oil that dripped on them. Some of them have some dry rot on them. I don't know how good they are. I believe two out of the four still hold air, but they still come with hubs, bearings, and whatever else. Also, if someone needs an FL250 uh, rear axle, whatever the hell you want to call it, with the gear, with the um, transmission, this works. Um, I don't believe it leaks. I think that's the brake. That comes with it. So if you guys want this, if someone wants this, message me, DM me, do whatever. Um, I'd be happy to get this out to you guys. Again, you'll have to pick up shipping or logistics, anything like that. But uh, yeah, guys, that's really, uh, that's really about it. Excuse the mess in the shop. Like I said, it's a summer cleanup, essentially. And, um, you know, we'll see what this makes for uh, power. You know, um, if we don't get to the number that I'm hoping we'll get, if we break, you know, 25 to the tire. I'm happy. I really am happy. Um, but if we don't get there, we want to get there a little bit more. Here is an old barstool racer I made before blowing the motor. Oh, and what's that? A sneaky peat nitrous. We will just add that to it just to, you know, spice things up a little bit. If you guys got any comments, let me know. Um, other things that are in the works. Um, let's make our way over here real quick. The G8, by the way, it's a hundred and something shot spray. It's always nice. Here is just real quick. Here is right around a thousand horsepower, 440 cubic inch LS7 blocks, um, solid roller. I think the duration is like 280 or 290. I can't remember off the top of my head. And uh, this will be being sprayed with about a 200, 250 shot and a Trametic TR6060, uh, I believe also known as the T56 Magnum, um, built by. D and D or A and A transmissions can't remember, but that'll be fun. I'll eventually make a video of this. And um, hey, you guys, you know what? Be well, stay healthy. There's a pandemic going on, um, and uh, you know I'll have updates for you guys. Take care.